Hello everyone, uh, I'm Fawad. I'm one of the developers and maintainers of uh, Phoenix, the experiment independent event display. Uh, and right now I am I'm on the home page of the Phoenix application. You know, you can navigate here by going to this URL at gpsoftwarefoundation.org slash phoenix. So on the home page we have these cards to navigate to different part of the parts of the application. Uh, I'm going to show you the Atlas experiment uh, and from there I'm going to show some of the features that we have in the event display. So this is the loading screen. It might take some time on your end because uh, the, de de the detector geometry is really large in size. Okay, so now we are in the, inside the event display for the Atlas experiment. Uh, as you can see, we have a sample event here and, and the Atlas detector. Now I can move around in the scene using my mouse by dragging my by clicking and dragging the mouse left click uh, and also I can zoom in and zoom out by scrolling through the mouse. Yeah, so uh, the first thing I want to show here to show you here is the Phoenix menu which is used to control how we want to display the event data uh, in the scene. So for example if I want to hide the entire detector I could hide it by clicking this uh, this button here and it will hide the entire detector. Uh, and also there are options to change the visualization of the detector. For example, if I were to wireframe the detector geometry, I could enable this option. And if I if I were to change the opacity, I could I could use this option here and change the opacity. Uh, and we can we have these uh, subparts of the detector as well, like magnets and inner detector. I could uh, hide the magnets by clicking on the button again, and as you can see, the magnets are hidden. Uh, and we can also buy, uh, hide the subparts of, for example, the subparts of the detector. So for example, here, if, want, if I want to hide uh, the subpart of the inner detector, for example, pixel or pixel or CSAT, uh, I could just use these options, and it will hide the the geometries in the in the scene. So there are uh, there are also options to change the how how we want to visualize the parts uh, of the. Of the detector for example if I were to change uh, the color of the pixel here I could set it to red or white or whatever I want and also change the opacity from here so these are the options we have for for detector uh, and now moving moving on to the event, uh, event data I can also hide the event data from here by clicking the radio button here uh, and as you can see it hides the entire event data and then we have the event data types uh, that are children to the event data so if I just want to hide the tracks I can hide I could hide all the tracks that are in the scene and then we if we jump inside the event data type we have collections so I can hide any of these collections I want uh, and it will hide that part in in the scene so for example uh, then then we also have options for how we want to visualize the event data individually so for example i could change the draw options here i could change the opacity and wireframe wireframe the event data even uh, and i could, up, could apply some cut options here for example if i want to decrease this uh, this <coughs> this option as you can see if uh, if i slide slide the slider here the some of the some of the tracks are are being hidden now so I can uh, edit this for all parts of, uh, of, I can do this for all the cuts that are available here. Now I will reset the cuts from here and uh, we can move on to the next part. Uh, and we also have color options for changing the color of uh, any kind of event data. For example, I want to change the color of the, uh, of the tracks collection here to yellow. So I could move to the yellow part and do this and it will color the tracks yellow. And there is also the option to color color the color the tracks by charge, momentum, or vertex, but by vertex to which they are associated to. So these are the options we have for tracks. Uh, and if I move on to the next even data type, for example, jets, we can <coughs> uh, decrease or increase the jet size from here. And inside the collections, we also have the same options as we have in for for the tracks. As you can see, we have some cuts here and then color options as well. So I could even randomize the colors here and it will randomly color the jets. 
uh, and we have similar options for all kinds of event data here for example for cal clusters photons uh, electrons and everything else for missing energy i could increase the size or decrease the size from here and it will it will be affected in the event display yeah so moving on i'll move on to the uh, phoenix icon bar or the phoenix ui menu that we have at the bo bottom of the screen so from i'll go through it from left to right or in the leftmost part we have the zoom zoom in and zoom out buttons i can hold these buttons by clicking my mouse and zoom in and zoom out of the scene the next we have view options these these can be used to change the view uh, from where we want to view uh, the detector or or the event in the scene uh, and if i for example use the center view it will move us to the center view of the of the event display and from here i can also show the grid or show access or hide it and i can change these options next we can also auto auto rotate the detector and uh, i'm not doing anything and it's uh, auto, auto rotating by itself this is really useful for uh, for outreach purposes and then next we have the option to change the theme of the uh, of the event display for example if you prefer a lighter theme then you can display uh, disable the dark theme this will be picked up automatically for by, from your system so if you're using a dark theme it would autom automatically use the dark theme or else it will use uh, the light theme and then we have the options for clipping the geometry here so if i were to disable the clipping as you can see the the clipping of the detector will be gone and it will be full again and if i want to clip and change the clipping here to to 180 degrees then i can do that from here so we have these kind of options uh, and then we can also change the view uh, uh, the view of the 3d uh, 3d view and then if I, for example if i want to switch to the orthographic view i can click this icon here and it will move to the orthographic view and uh, show us the detector in the ortho orthographic mode and we also have the overlay display here as you can see so so this shows the this is currently showing the uh, orthographic view of the detector uh, and i have some several options here i could hide the background or or make the background trans transparent for uh, for the overlay or i could make the background some some dark color and then i i could also fix this overlay view right here and if i move the scene around from here then then it won't be changed and if i disable that again then we can move around the overlay as well and then i can switch to perspective view from here as well i'll hide the overlay view now and then next we have uh, uh, the selections option selection uh, object selection option uh, now if I, if I hide the detector here I could choose this uh, object selection and I could hover over any object in the scene uh, any any even data and I would be shown these properties of that even data right here so if since I've just selected a jet here as you can see I can see some of the properties of jets uh, and if I want to for example select a track here for example this uh, this red color track I could do it by clicking this uh, this track right here and it will show us a bunch of properties that that, that this track has uh, and anything can be chosen from here for example these uh, cal clusters as well here you can see the properties of these clusters and also if we want to check the, the detector then we can also select parts of the detector and it will show us what what part the detector is and also some properties of the of that part of the detector I'll exit the object selection mode now and next we have the info panel here this is just uh, uh, this just shows what's happening inside the event display for example it shows that what items I clicked or what objects I clicked and what uh, what geometries have been loaded and things like that so this is for, uh, info, for information purposes now I'll move on to the next option which is the animation of the event so for example if I click this icon here it will animate the event uh, like it will collide to particles and generate the event data from there and this is really helpful uh, helpful in outreach purposes and then next uh, and then next i also have the options for some preset animations i could apply an a custom preset animation from here for example animate camera or preset one for example if i click the preset one animation here it will go through the scene uh, by following a path and uh, and animate uh, animate the particles 
as if, uh, as if simulating the actual environment. So next we have the event data collections info panel. So, so this is a really very useful and uh, full of features uh, panel. Uh, from here I can choose any collection. For example, uh, I can choose the GSF tracks collection. I could reduce the size of this uh, of this panel. And as you can see, we have the uh, we have a list of all the all the tracks that are in that collection. And from here, what's interesting, is, for example, if I hide the detector to be a, to to be to easily view the event data, I can I can choose these options here. For example, for for the selection part, I can move to this track right here by clicking this uh, move camera to object, and it will move me to that track. And if, for example, if I want to label this track, for example, te track test, and apply this label. And then as you can see that we have a label here for the track and the option here label will have a sub uh, a child or a sub uh, uh, sub option here so we can change we can uh, hide this label here or change options for this label like changing the color for example if I want to make it the same color as the as the track then I can I can use the black, yellow color from here uh, and we can add these labels to any of the tracks here and apply it from here and also we can remove it by removing this, this text and reloading the label and the label is gone from here so uh, there's a list and also if you uh, if you scroll horizontally you can see all the properties of the track that that this of that, that this particular collection has uh, and we can do this for every ki other kind of collection for example a jets collection which could be the for example the topo jets here we have two jets i can move to the jet and as you can see i'm i'm close uh, this uh, this jet will be highlighted uh, and we can have these these same kind of options for every for every collection of event data we have in the event display. Okay, that's it for the collections info panel. Next, we have the performance mode. So, so if we, if I had, for example, the entire detector and uh, and the event display was per, was a bit slow, I could enable this performance mode, and it will increase the FPS of the of the event display and increase the performance overall. So if you have a have a desktop or or a machine that doesn't support high high end 3D graphics, then you could say uh, enable this uh, performance mode. Next, we have the VR options and the AR, uh, and the AR options here, which you can view in your mobile device or or some other device that supports AR or VR. Okay, so moving on, we have the screenshot mode, which can be used to hide all the overlays and just display the event display, uh, and then that uh, we can take a screenshot and then if I click the event display again then we exit the screenshot mode next we have the import and export options here uh, where, where we have the option to import some event data for example we could import a Phoenix JSON format or or, or a file in the JavaXL, JavaXML format uh, and also as if uh, which contains either, either of these formats and then we have options to load different types of geometries here uh, and also the options to import and export the entire scene. Moving on, we have the creatable, create shareable link option, which can be used to create a shareable link to the particular experiment we are on. For example, as you can see, this is the same URL as we are now. So if I copy and share this with someone else, they will load to the same uh, experiment, the Atlas experiment. Uh, and here I can specify uh, a custom event data file for either on the same server or some other server. Uh, and then I can choose the type of event data file that I have specified here, which is, which would be either Jive XML or JSON. Uh, and for example, if I were to specify test.json here, then it will update the URL accordingly. And then, for example, if I can, uh, if I choose the JSON file format, it will update the URL. And when I share it with someone else, it will try to load the file test.json with the, which has the JSON event data type. And then we have two types of uh, links here: uh, uh, the share link or the embed link. The share link can be used to 
share can be shared with everyone and they can open it in the browser and and the embed link is the one which uh, which can be used to embed phoenix uh, in an article or a blog so this is it for for the shareable link constructor uh, and those are those are all the options we have uh, uh, in the ui menu and i think that's it yeah thanks for watching the video and uh, I hope you like Phoenix and uh, we're looking for contributors so if you, if you want to contribute to Phoenix feel free to uh, go to the github site which is github.com slash hsf slash phoenix yeah so you can contribute here we have some advanced guides uh, the user manual and developer guides as well for setting up Phoenix for different kinds of experiments and also how to use it so yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and peace out. Thank you.